Welcome back to Nano Dosing. It is Tuesday. It is November 8th. It's election day. Get out there and vote. Nano the vote. That's what we're saying. Remember that? Like every, everybody has their own like little rock the vote, truth the vote. Everybody just puts whatever in front of the vote. Should what are we doing? Nano vote. Dose the vote. Yeah. Dose the vote. I like it. No, no, that would be that would be Dose the vote. party. That'd be vote twice. Vote twice. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's, hey, hey. I think you got the wrong side, pal. PFT overworked. No, me no I'm saying they would, I'm and saying your, your side would. Yeah, I'm. I'm, uh, I'm making sure that Billy and Big T uh, are not allowed to leave the office tomorrow. Holding him hostage, it's, giving, it's them voter giving them assignments. Giving them, yeah. Well, Big T said that he doesn't vote here in New York. He's no, he's still registered, so he's actually you're illegally voting. No, I don't vote. So that's in, oh, so you don't vote just in general. I don't vote at all. Well, oh. since I've lived here, no, nope. you didn't mail in ballot. No, interesting. Um, so yeah, it's election day. Get out there, vote or don't vote. Whatever. You know, Use your American right. It's your American right not to vote also. So whatever you choose to do, I support that. How about that? Freedom of freedom of expression, even if that expression is, I don't feel like it. I, I have to say, though, people complaining about politics, special lo especially local politics, who don't vote, like, you can't do that. Yeah, why that not? It's fun. Me. No, but that pisses me off. Like, freedom. no offense, Big T, I know you're in a different, like, like, uh, uh, you're not registered in New York, but if you're going to complain about New York politics and then not take the action to go register and vote, no, I, I don't, I don't dis, I don't agree with that. You don't agree with that because I mean, you got to take action. That. You can't just be all talk, Billy, especially local, local, yeah, local, local like, you more than anything else. Exactly. Way more, yeah, I agree with that. Local. Like if you if you hate like if you think New York's dirty, if you think that you got to vote, it's objectively dirty. I know, but like if you are going to complain about the politics behind I it. I would have registered to vote in New York if I knew uh, that there was going to be a close gubernatorial race. Well, which there hasn't been the in, a, in a long time. But yeah, I mean, one thing I got a problem with is bail reform. You can literally rob three liquor stores in a day before getting detained. That's something that needs to, that gets is that Is that how it works? Yeah. So I, I've got some questions about bail reform because I, I saw... Uh, some of the interviews and some of the clips of the uh, the Illinois law that was making a lot of it was making the rounds on social media. So I looked into it. So I guess the premise behind the bail reform is you can still get out and continue to rob liquor stores even before this bail reform. Unarmed. OK, but if, I, if you're armed, you get detained. Right. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like uh, people that are accused of doing crimes, various crimes that that look pretty like they're bad crimes um if you have the money to pay ba bail then you can get out and continue to commit crimes but if you don't have the money to get out then you're not allowed to get out of jail so i guess the difference is like is should money be the deciding factor or because my understanding is that a judge can look at what somebody's arrested for and say they should not be out because they pose a harm to the community like i i guess what the bail reform is coming in to say is how come money is the reason whether or not somebody is out of jail or not? Not, not whether or not they're a threat to the community. Good point. I think that's what the the crux it, of it is. It does sound weird though to say like straight up when you see some of the ads uh, for like the the Chicago and uh, Illinois elections, people saying like uh, you know if you commit like a second degree assault or felony or felony uh, imprisonment or something like that you get out without bail. But I don't know, is there a judge that steps in and evaluates every case and says, this person should not be out on bail? Because I don't think it's just they arrest you and then they release you. So there, the one viral moment, if you guys saw the video, I think it was a guy in a McDonald's with a hatchet who was just breaking everything up, and threatening people, who then was out. The, I don't know how he got out, but he was out doing interviews the next day. Okay. And he had a court date, but he'd been released. Like... It's complicated because there is gray area where, you know, a judge can take action, but because of how, like, how does that, yeah, how does it work? The judge evaluates every single case or is it just, I, I, cause I don't think it's arrest the person then immediately let them go because they also have you have to process. take into You have to take into account due process too, right? Yeah. So like if you get arrested for a crime, it doesn't mean that you're guilty of the crime and you have to go through the court of law and the ju judicial process. But if you're a, a threat to somebody or the community, then that should be, I, I feel like that should be up to a judge to say whether or not you're a threat. 
I think that's what the whole bail reform thing is getting. At. And again, I haven't done that much reading on it. I've just kind of I've looked into a little bit because I saw some of the stuff that they were saying about Illinois. And I was like, this seems insane if they're just letting anybody that's arrested for these crimes directly back back. Out well, the there was there was the guy in New York recently who he beat his wife that was caught on a camera they had in their house. Yeah. She posted it to Facebook. He went to jail, but because they only had like a couple misdemeanor things on him, he was out like within 24 hours and then killed her. Yeah, it sucked. That's that's awful. So my understanding is it's only there are certain crimes that obviously if you murder somebody, you don't just get let right. out of jail. But there are crimes that don't rise to that level that you don't have to post bail or anything. You just get that's, release. That's the big crux of the issue, especially in New York. Why a Republican even has a chance in New York this time around. But, you know, we'll see. I think it's also because people are sick of uh, Democrats running the state just in general. I, I think that they're, everything is just tied to tied to Cuomo. Yeah, well, Cuomo. People Cu- are still still angry at Cuomo, still upset at, well, at de Blasio. People were fine with Cuomo back when he was just he was a Democrat, but he was more of a author, like authoritarian ruler of the state. And a lot of people, especially like a lot of people like that. They like that because he, he was like. You could tell he just wanted to maintain power and just like it's sometimes it's, you know, kind of nice living under a dictator. The thing is, with Cuomo, he's uh, well, anybody that gets statewide office in New York ends up going to jail. Yeah, it's crazy when you look at the stats of like the top three elected officials in New York history, what happens to them? They all get accused of a crime. They all end up standing trial for a crime. It's wild. Huh. All right. So it's election day. Go out and vote or don't vote. Piss Billy off by not voting. Well, you cannot vote, but then just don't complain. Okay. That's uh, fair, complaining right? is fun, though. Yeah, but like, you're allowed to complain, but don't like blame it on the politicians that you didn't take any action. Towards. All right. And if you don't get out there and vote, you know what? Just just vote. I'm going to say it's a good thing to yeah. vote. You it, can't get mad. Billy's right. You I'm, can't get upset at who gets elected in if you don't vote. I'm in favor of voting. And, I think that everybody out there should vote. That applies to a lot of conservatives in New York. So they're like, oh, my vote doesn't count. And it's like, then, you know, you have no just say. Just vote. Don't, just vote. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Run that by again? Uh, then, just because you have no say? I mean, a lot of, like, I know a lot of Republicans in New York are like, oh, like, my vote doesn't count here. It doesn't matter. That's true. But generally. That's but, not true. Every vote counts, bro. But it doesn't affect anything. doesn't matter. But the people who say that are the reason why they don't count no 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 like, well kind of but not really like if every republican that lived in new york city voted it wouldn't make a difference now on a national scale it would if you had like a national popular vote for president but not in like just a new york city election if you if you made voting mandatory what do you think would happen because in australia yeah it's mandatory they fine you if you don't vote you have to pay they did that in ancient Greece too. Yeah, well, a it, lot of doors getting kicked down, a lot must of doors vote. broken into. The thing is, I, I'm so terrible at, like organizational stuff. Like I try to vote as much as I can, and I've started to do it recently. But like back when I was like in college and stuff, like filing all that paperwork, like getting my door banged down, like jury duty is hard enough. <laughs> I don't know that we have the infrastructure to have everyone vote if we wanted to. We don't. Not at a polling place, definitely not. It would overwhelm the the locations. I mean, people would be in line for hours Days. and hours and hours and hours and hours. Yeah, I actually did my uh, my senior thesis on blockchain voting that we should be able to vote. Uh, How does that phones. work? Basically, just using crypto blockchain technology to make sure that everyone is bio uh, using uh, like fingerprints, eye scans. So one you'd have to person. give the government your fingerprint. Yeah, then, then, you know, it was, but I think that's a due sacrifice. You think, like, Big T just lit up like a Christmas tree there. Big T. You just lost all your libertarian friends. Some, uh, I know. But I, that, somebody that, it somebody comes to things. Big T's house and says, I need your fingerprint I mean, Billy, come so on. that you can I vote. Know. I think, I think but, Big T. But only if you wanted to vote. So, I mean... So you anyway, register by voting. It was by, one of those things where you write a thesis that may not exactly line up with your beliefs, but you're trying those to who are willing to give up. So. Wait, wait. So, so Billy's senior thesis was lying. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, you, if you don't find like college students in America who don't change their own views and their essays and assignments just to like impress their lib teachers, like 
that's like a huge wait thing. wait what what part of using blockchain to vote is a liberal tenant uh more like on the authoritarian side i have no i how, bigger government no. bigger government <laughs> Bigger government. It, it makes the, there's no, it's Billy, two, that, different Billy, things, two different things. Your your political you're, imp- you you have the political understanding of somebody who's exactly your age, which I don't I, I don't blame you I'm for. I'm just saying we But be- to, to think that that comes down to like a left or right, like the using blockchain no, no, technology. No, no, but, but but you spend too much time on the internet. That's know, your problem. I know. So I'm saying he's arguing with memes in his head. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> Billy's Billy's debating memes. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, it, but there are people who like change their, I'm just saying that people, not necessarily if they're liberal teachers, conservative teachers, but people during assignments in college. Just saying they bullshit their, their way yeah, through assignments. Bull, exactly. Absolutely. So Absolutely. did, did make a, 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 <laughs> To appease your liberal professor. Or your liberal on, professor, conservative professor, come on, whatever. Okay. Come on. No, come but on, that man. happens a lot. It was just everyone's no, grinding no, an A, no, so you try to just align your views with the person grading your paper. I, listen, because I, I bullshit my true. way through a lot, of, a lot of stuff. That's what I'm saying. I think what he's saying there, no, Arian, I think that does happen a lot in college, but not not like the the blockchain people are afraid to speak up the blockchain thing was just creating a bulletproof way that we could ensure as many people who can vote and ensure it's secure it was kind of at that time it was 2020 right and like the election just happened it was what was buzzing so we basically just put together a way that the most people could vote the most secure way (sighs) we could figure it out we actually talked to a lot of congressmen so the most secure way to vote. Offices, yeah, they didn't answer the Zoom calls, so we just talked to one of their. I mean, <laughs> I, I think if if we could figure out a way for everybody to vote, it would you would see a massive shift one way or the other in politics in the United States. I don't know what it would be, but I'm sure I'm a hundred percent sure that this kind of gridlock that we have, where it's about fifty fifty split, just about on everything across the country. I'm sure that like one, there's some side out there that that would stand to benefit massively from mandatory voting. And I'm not sure which side it would be. Could be a third party. The third party just, it's the people that don't vote. <laughs> that is the third party. Yeah. <laughs> Apathy, the apathetic party. Bro, have you ever heard uh, anybody drill down on Andrew Yang? That might be one of the funniest <laughs> things in the world. Oh, yeah. Like, what was your... Because his, his, yeah. his whole thing is like the forward party, not left, not right, but forward. And then like, so like, with, but somebody asked him, okay, like, well, where do you stand on this? And he's like, you know, we don't really, he doesn't ever take a stance on anything. He's like, well, but wherever you align politically, you're gonna have to make a decision on what your stance on this is. And he just, he just kind of talks around it. It's the funniest shit in the world. What was it like PFT interviewing him? He was a nice a couple guy. couple years ago. He was, he was a, interviewed him? He's a yeah. friendly enough guy. I, I did, uh, I interviewed a bunch of people as like in the run up to 2020. So I interviewed Tim Ryan. I interviewed Hickenlooper. I remember this now. Hickenlooper was the senator, the former senator and governor in Colorado. And he uh he has he has face blindness, which means he forgets people's faces. It's like a uh, it's a medical condition that he has. And I I listen, I don't want to be ableist, but I feel like being able to recognize people is a good trait to have if you want to be president. Right? Being able to see somebody and be like that is Kim Jong Un. Probably be probably be good to know who that is. Hey, FDR couldn't walk. So True. Yeah. I, I so if you're sure. president, you have to you don't have to run a marathon. I don't need you competing in a in a hundred meter dash against somebody. You could have a Easter Bunny chasing you around. I actually do think we should have a physical challenge element to the presidential debates. What do you think? Strong man. Just no, nothing <laughs> crazy. I just want to see them. I don't know. Play game of pickup basketball or something. I just want to see what we're. I feel like uh, eliminate the eighty-year-olds we have running for president. Royal yeah. Rumble. I totally agree. Although you remember Joe Biden tried to do a, do a push-up contest against that guy that he called Fat. No. It was uh, he was out on on the on the road last year before the election. Excuse me. And somebody like somebody started saying something about being old or something. He's like, listen here, Fat. <laughs> I'll, I'll do put you want to see you want to do push up contest against me right now. Yeah, like do uh, that. I, I agree with Big T. I think that they should shoot a basketball and then throw a baseball. Yeah, you can tell a lot about somebody by by their throwing motion. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's just you can tell immediately if you're gonna like this guy or not. That's fair. 
Um, I uh, can I read you a couple that, tweets from? Is that so? I, I want to Billy throw a baseball real quick. Let me, let me see. Let me My see your baseball? baseball. Yeah, like like just, just let me see your form real quick. I got a decent that's arm that's slot. I don't have a baseball right now. I throw just, football. Just just, stand just, up. just mimic the mimic the the mo motion. motion. Billy would definitely just try to wing it like a hundred miles per hour. <laughs> <sighs> the thing is, my right, I want just like, I want based on based on Billy's throw. Are you fucking with him? That wasn't bad. I mean, it's just are you just, fucking with him? Yeah, my arm slot. Fuck. Yeah, that's pretty good. Are down. you fucking with him? I I'm yeah, fucking with Billy. Yeah, I fuck with I rock okay. with Billy. <laughs> Okay. Pickup basketball is where you really learn a lot about a person. And that's facts. Yeah. That's fa I've had friends like, well, bro, I don't fuck with you because of how you play ball, bro. Like, absolutely. I'd agree with that take. That yeah. Obama, I think, talked about that a lot. Yeah. He had a nice he, shot. He, I think, he, in uh, his relative book, to other presidents. True. Was, no, wait, wait, wait. No, he there's was trash. He I, was trash, bro. No, no, he but was I was, trash. Obama spoke about in his book how when he was meeting Michelle, he went to go play pickup basketball with her brothers. And that is where they sort of uh, learned to like who he really was as a person. Something like that. Let me look it up. It was in his book. I just remember him talking about that phenomenon mm -hmm. about like knowing like, cause even if they're bad, if they're bad in like getting rebounds and just hustling, like you're like okay, he he knows his limits and he tries to contribute as much as he can. Yeah, that's that's my game in pickup basketball. I just I bring the ball to the court, I get rid of it, and then I just hustle for loose balls. That's mm -hmm. it. I don't try to drive, don't try to shoot, just just try not to make too big a fool of myself. I'll take that guy ten times out of ten over somebody who think that they can pull up from forty, bro. I would take that because like you need those guys on the team gonna hustle, get yeah. the boards, and you know what I mean? Well, that's why. Like uh, in the G League, they you're more likely to get brought up if you're one of those guys because they're not looking for the next Michael Jordan in the G League. They're looking for a guy who can contribute to the team. Yep. What are you eating, Aaron? My bad, homie. Um, I just got back from golfing, and so it's like this amazing sandwich that my shorty made. That's nice. What's in it? It's, it's got uh, it's got it's got bacon. Egg, lettuce, tomato, salami, turkey. It's just amazing. That's dope. That's and dope. and then the and then the bread is like kind of toasted, but like like on the on the grill. So it's like grilled a little bit. That sounds Something incredible. Like that. that sounds like a comfortable sandwich to slip right into. Speaking right. about comfortable things to slip into, have you guys tried the new Hey Dude shoes? They sent some to the yes. office. Yes, I've been rocking them. I took them home. They're mega comfortable. Yeah. Incredibly comfortable shoes. They're light. They're super light. That's the very first thing I do now when I get a pair of shoes. I just lift them up in the air and I hold them. They're light. They're easy. They're an epiphany for your feet. They have texture materials, design details that add style to every outfit or look. They make you feel delighted, comfortable, and happy. They're super easy to take on and off. And actually, the perfect shoe for watching football, for just being around your house. Oh, Avery brought it in right now. Mine are at home right now because I was actually wearing them. Look how easy you can catch day. that because of how light it is. The most easily catchable shoe on the planet. Tell you what, if they had thrown this at George W. Bush, he would have just he would have headbutted it right back at that guy. The Hey Dude shoe is awesome. Super lightweight. They slide right on, slide right off. I can't get enough of these things. They're the perfect dog walk, going out to the store quickly shoe. Yeah. Taking out the trash shoe. Yeah. Like it's a shoe that doesn't break your chill vibe like you don't have to lace it up yeah like i've been using it that's what i've been using it for it's great it, you're right billy it is great dog walking it's waterproof shoes. too so if you go out in the rain it's like it's like enough commitment to protect your foot but not mm -hmm. enough commitment to have to lace up or go through a lot it's a great shoe for watching football for being around your house for cooking it's a good cooking shoe if you're going into the kitchen and you got some some hot grease popping here or there and uh you want to put on a shoe to do it I'm telling you, these Hey Dude shoes are amazing. They're they're probably the best casual shoe that I've ever put on. Visit HeyDudeShoeUSA.com. Use code Barstool. Get 15% off. They're also the perfect gift. If there's somebody that's tough to shop for, go to HeyDudeShoesUSA.com. Use promo code Barstool for 15% off. That's HeyDudeShoesUSA.com. Use promo code Barstool for 15% off. Terms and conditions apply.
Speaking of USA, I wanted to bring up, I went and checked in on our pal, uh, Nick Adams, leading into the election. Yeah. He has a three tweet uh, thread okay. right here that I'd like to read for you. I was at Hooters over the weekend when I overheard two stunning waitresses discussing their plans to vote on Tuesday. They both were undecided, but said they were leaning Republican because of the cost of gas and groceries. I pray those two lovely ladies make the right call. So that's a harmless anecdote. <laughs> it's good. Uh, he continues on. I'm sick and tired of beta males and feminists trying to guilt alpha males out of eating at Hooters. There is absolutely nothing wrong with eating at Hooters on a weekly basis, <laughs> even with the family and kids. <laughs> the third one says alpha males eat wings and drink beer at Hooters with the boys. Beta males nibble on tapas at Spanish vegan cafes <laughs> with their wives. Tapas are pretty dope, though. Oh, wow. I don't know about the vegan yeah, part. Yeah. All right. All right. Ba beta Billy. Dope. No, I'm actually. <laughs> I, hey, look at Beta so, Billy over here eating tapas like tiny little food. Back in a, with your tiny little fingers. Back in the day, Hooters in Times <laughs> Square had the cheapest beer per ounce in the city. So me and all my buddies were trying to. We were young and didn't have much money and trying to find where we could drink beers underage. Hooters had this double mug for seven dollars, and I think it was about twenty four ounces of beer for seven dollars, which in the city is an amazing deal. And I don't know if they reopened it after COVID, but that was the cheapest beer per ounce in the like in Lower Manhattan, at least. So just Hooters is awesome. That uh, Hooters is great. I do I do love Hooters. Um, Nick Adams is uh, he's on one right now. He's he's very he's putting out sports takes too. It's no coincidence that Tom Brady is undefeated since getting divorced. Is that that might just be the definition of a coincidence? Damn. Did, didn't he get to? Oh, he got they divorced just filed last week. They yeah. just filed for divorce, so that's why that's why he beat the Rams, I guess. I mm. shitty to do it during the season though. On whose part? Uh, I doubt he initiated it during the season because, like, I've done both. I've gotten divorced and I've had litigation in the season. Not divorce litigation, but litigation in general is just long and drawn out and. When you're divorcing, it's just a you know it's a contract. You're saying what goes to what, what who gets what, and all that shit. But it's like back and forth. You're always on the emails from the lawyers, and it's just like a toxic ass process. Mm -hmm. And to do that during the season is wild, dog. Yeah, that, that must take so much time to go through that. I have a feeling that Giselle pulled the trigger for financial reasons, because we gotta remember Tom Brady's like not the main breadwinner. Right. Giselle's like, he's basically a stay at home dad with a little sports job compared to multi billion dollar Giselle. Yeah, she makes way more money than he does. So, like, Giselle's probably like, this dude's going to steal all my money if uh, we let it. I got to I gotta save my assets. No way. There's no way they had joint bank. There's no way they had. They, they got to have separate. Who do you think pays like, for When dinner? you both make a. Uh, that would be just like a. Uh, that would be a fun thing with your spouse if, if she was making bread like that. Flip a coin, but like, yeah, there's no way that they, uh, they had to keep separate finances. There's no way. I mean, they were married for a very long time, though. Was she always rich? Yeah, yeah. Then I, I doubt it. I doubt then that they had a uh, joint anything. But if you don't combine your your accounts, isn't that aren't you just saying I'm not going all the way in on this? Like we're gonna get divorced one day. How does the taxes? Oh no. Yeah, what point? So you never end up merging finances with your spouse. I don't to, think you should. To well, me, well, really? Why would you? Why would you merge your finances? Because the idea of mar so. idea of marriage is that two people now share a life together. They share everything. So what's mine is yours. That's what's it. yours I, is mine. I, see, I, I, I take exception to the share everything. So you don't think that there should be zero life outside of your spouse? No, there's definitely life outside the spouse. But I'm saying that when it comes to something like finances. You're taking care of each other. You're in this partnership for the long haul. Why would you? Why would you not want to share that part of your life with them? Why? Why would that? I feel like that would actually be a strengthening thing, where the two of you have that one, uh, like financial. Yeah, your financial relationship with each other is in the exact same. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're both pulling on the same side when it comes to finances. It's not I, like I one team against another. Well, and see, I, I, well, if you if you think of it like a team, then then yeah. But if you think of it like, all right, so I totally get the sentiment. Like the sentiment sounds beautiful, right? But 
if we just play in odds here, just Vegas odds, <clears throat> right? A divorce rate is like over 50%, right? So it's not necessarily saying I'm keeping this from you. What it's saying is, listen, at this juncture of our life, we we are together. We mm -hmm. work together. We work well together. But as we know, sometimes humans grow apart. And what this is doing is this is protecting myself and yourself in case one of us grows apart or we grow apart mutually or whatever the case may be. It's just playing the odds <clears throat> because it happens a lot. Divorce happens a lot. People make mistakes. People fuck up, whatever the case may be. And it's just it's protecting. And also, and also, I think the element of like the breadwinner versus, you know, like I, 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 like I understand if you you have been working, you know, nine to five jobs for X amount of years for 30 years and, you know, you didn't you join it. That makes sense. Right. But when it comes to something like this, where she's a multi hundred million dollar brand, he's a multi hundred million dollar brand. It makes no sense to join accounts. It just, there's no there's no benefit. What's the benefit? I think that if you look at the divorce rate, my guess would be that it would be higher amongst people that don't ever merge accounts together and don't ever share those finances. Also, that divorce rate is a little uh, maybe there's something that skews the divorce rate because a lot of people get married and divorced several more times. Yeah. So there's some people who get married twice and get divorced twice. But in the every marriage, there's 60 percent chance of divorce. Those two divorces by one person counts towards that percentage. So if you looked at uh, marriages that end in, I think, one divorce, so first marriages, mm -hmm. I think it's a much lower uh, rate for just first marriages. You know, the divorce rate is at a 50 year low right now. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I think it's because a lot of people aren't getting married anymore. Yeah, less people are getting married. Yeah. And and those that do stay together. They stay together because they really want to get married, not because they feel yeah. pressure to do it. Yeah. Forty one percent of all first marriages end in divorce, sixty percent of second marriages. So yeah. like forty percent makes more sense. Forty percent is still really high. That's I don't think so, man. That sounds really high to me. Marriage is unnatural. It's just an unnatural thing. I disagree with that. I think marriage is a very natural thing. In, in very niche corners of the world, in any environment, you're going to find two animals that just mate for life. It's it rare. No, no, it happens. Penguins do it. I, I, I said it's rare. The Nene rare. goose does it. The noble Nene goose, lest we forget. You probably. I hear you. You probably don't know about <clears throat> the Nene goose. That's fine. I definitely don't There's know about the Nene goose. There's a case for monogamy. I think monogamy but is a, it's it's rare. It's rare. I mean, people should just do what makes them happy, and I think that uh, a lot of times they find that in a in a solid marriage. I mean, I mean, marriage originally was uh, it was property exchange, right? Like, there's nothing, you know, sanctimonious about that. There's nothing. That's it's 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 a wildly misogynistic viewpoint to have a woman that was his property and to give them away for cattle or no, no, land. No, no. They actually <clears throat> gave. Was that a Trump was... reference? Did you see him say that to about DeSantis? What did he say? He, he called him Ron DeSanctimonious. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, no. <laughs> he needs more work. Yeah. He's been I think it, it I think it meant to be a joke and people were like, oh my God, does he hate DeSantis now? But it was funny. You got to watch it. No, I mean, he, he comes up with these nicknames about everybody. So he's... Yeah. I feel like he can go. Let's go back to the drawing board on that one. Yep. We can do better with Ron DeSantis than that. Yeah. Ron, De, Ron DeSanta. Ron, ooh, why, why DeSanta? Because he's like Santa Claus. No, Santa gives out free shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, De San, Ron DeSantifa. <laughs> Santifa. I like that. Uh, <laughs> Ron De. Ron DeSave Us. Ron De, Ron De San Piss. Yo, his suit jacket is be hella big, dog. Come on, all I'm saying is Trump. You, we can do better than De Sanctimonious. Although you know what, I thought the same thing when it came to Sleepy Joe. I thought the same thing when it came to Lion Ted. But they they just have a way of growing on you after a while. So you maybe, keep it simple, leading Ron. Leading Ron. I mean, Little Marco, Sleepy Ted, Sleepy Joe, Lion Ted. Little Marco yeah. really. 
set Marco Rubio back big time. Well, little, Mar- little, little Marco sitting was a bad at, one. sitting in that gigantic chair <laughs> when you've been called Little Marco was a horrific mistake. Little Marco was a that was a a good nickname. Um, low energy Jeb. I thought that one was too long to catch on. I yeah. really did. I thought that was that was too much of a mouthful, but it worked. He nailed him. Two syllable <laughs> adjective that ends in an in ing, but you take the g off and put an apostrophe. Lion yeah. Ted, something like that. I guess the other ones don't do that, but that's the best one. Lion Ted is a good one. Um, Monogamy. Fr- front run, front run and run. <laughs> well, no, that's bad. He's a well. No, I'm saying he, I guess fr- if he front run- runs. He Ron DeSantis is very good at figuring out what people are getting worked up about. And then becoming a champion of that cause. He's very good at like attaching himself to causes that are popular. That's what I'm saying. Lil Ronnie might because he's a little guy. Is he little? Yeah, I, I so. thought it, I thought he was a wasn't he a pretty good athlete? He was he a baseball was, player. Like, the best at baseball Yale. player at Yale. Yeah, but like he hit like 380. Yeah, but you know what that, that happens? Does Yale play? Yeah, you know what that you know what happens when you're a really good athlete at Yale? Skull and crossbones. Guess who else played baseball for Yale? It was George Bush. And his father. Just you know, that's that's my qualms. I think he might be going to check out a giant burning owl sometimes. We got to fig- know. We got to figure out whether or not he's a skull and crossbones member. Yeah, skull and bones saying. member. Did he get tapped on the quad? Who knows? Batting 380. I bet he did. I bet he's a, a big time skull and crossbones member. Definitely heading out to the Bohemian Grove. You think anything actually goes down at the skulls? So, from what I've heard about it. Yeah, uh, jack off in a coffin, right? I don't know, dude. So, I had a buddy who played football who's getting recruited uh, at Ivy Leagues, and he ended up going to UPenn, and he said that like the Yale football team was pretty weird. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they were. <laughs> uh, listen, before we get into um, some of the other stuff that I want to get into today, how about we just touch on the Indianapolis Colts news? Jim Irsay has, has relieved Frank Reich of his duties as of this morning, and he has chosen... To hire Jeff Saturday, ESPN analyst, former center mm. for the Indianapolis Colts. Ron De- or, <laughs> Jeff Saturday was uh, a football coach. Ron DeSantis. Head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. The Indian- hey, listen, the Browns almost hired Condoleezza Rice. Facts. So, <laughs> so anything can happen. But um, Jeff Saturday was, he was a high school football coach in Georgia as recently as 2020. And I think he had a 3-7 and seven record coaching high school football then good competition down there though that's true that's very true uh and now he is the coach of the indianapolis colts nobody on the staff has any play calling experience whatsoever they have a second year slash kind of rookie quarterback and sam ellinger and nobody knows what the hell is going to happen this is just jim ursay being jim ursay and making it he he probably he interviewed Jeff Saturday was like, I think this man has the right energy to lead this franchise. I like I like his vibes. I think he's presenting um, just a good aura about him. So I'm going to go ahead and hire him. And now Jeff Saturday is going to have to figure out how to coach an NFL team. And this is, I love it. I love it. I mean, he's probably not the most qualified. Well, he's definitely not the most qualified person for the job. <laughs> like, I don't think that's a question at all. He's never coached in the NFL or in college. But... Um, I just I love the chaos. I can't wait to see <laughs> how hard it is for somebody to just get thrown into a position being the head coach of a football team because believe it or not, there's a lot of stuff that goes into coaching football besides like standing on the sidelines and yelling at refs. And that that's, that's something just, that we lose sometimes. It's it's crazy because like there's so much like I don't know Jeff Saturday's experience um with coaching. Like I don't know what he's been doing. I thought he was an analyst, wasn't he? He was, yeah, at ESPN for a while. I don't know if he's still there. So, I think that's what yeah, I've so seen I, him listed as ESPN analyst, Jeff Sutter. Usually, interim coaches like are involved with the program in some capacity, um, in a, a large capacity usually, um, because there's so much that that goes involves like scheduling. You know what I'm saying? Like scheduling practices, like little shit, like 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 planes, hotels. Uh, uh, meetings with coaches, meetings with players, like all of that shit is like usually a schedule, <clears throat> and usually coaches like are from a a tree of coaches, right? Like, like uh, I don't know, like the Jim Walsh or the Jim Walsh, uh, Bill Walsh, yeah. Walsh, Bill Walsh, the Bill Walsh tree. You know, what I'm saying? Uh, Belichick came from 
a, 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 a head coach. But it's like they all have like certain patterns and certain ways of doing things. And like, but if you have if if you just fresh up out like and just getting thrown in the fire in the middle of the season, that's yeah. I don't know how that's that's what that's wild. That's what I was gonna say. What an indictment on the rest of that staff that they were like. We don't really have anybody here that we think even has a chance of being good enough to get this job. Let's just go hire Jeff Saturday. Uh, Reggie Wayne, I think, would have been a much better. Yeah, well, Reggie Wayne doesn't have much experience no, either. No, but, but he's, he's on the staff. He's on the staff. With I, uh, you're, you're right. I would be I would be furious if I was if I was on one the of those staff. Assistants. If I was an assistant, and then they're like, "Well, no, we're going to get the guy on TV to come in and show you how things are done here." And so Saturday is going to come in. You're right. He has to like schedule figure out meeting schedules. He has to figure out meals and like the whole cafeteria schedule and all that shit. Like there's a lot of stuff that goes into being a coach. How much is he not getting? to say that he doesn't know how to coach. Like that's, that's another thing. So not only does he not know how to coach in an NFL game, but he also doesn't know how to do all the logistics that's necessary for a coach. But then that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, you can't implement an entire new system in the middle of a season. So you got to go with whatever they're going with. And so now, He's just getting walking in the door, so he has to learn that system, right? Yeah. And so he's going. He's going to be really reliant on his OC and his DC because he. I mean, you can know football, but not you know know the system. It takes a little while to learn the verbiage and the yes. protections and all of that stuff. And so it's like you basically just going to be like overseeing. You're going to be letting them coach, but you're going to be overseeing. And like you're, you'll make the calls like when to call timeouts and shit like that, but like you're just you're not going to be coaching coaching this year. Also, it's a new OC, brand new OC. Who's their OC now? I'm actually not sure, but they fired the last one. That's why Sam Ellinger Jesus, played so, so badly. Like he was, yeah. he's in such a bad situation. Yeah, they said nobody on the staff has ever called plays before. Ever. <laughs> Uh, I'm watching the Colts game next. Week. I was gonna say, like, I wish they were playing on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, if they oh had my God. three days to get ready. <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're, the good news for the Colts, you're playing the Raiders, so that's nice. If there's a, a team that might be, you know, worse coach than you, it's probably that. <laughs> What's the line in that game? If the Raiders lose that game, it's Colts are uh, Colts are six point underdogs at the Raiders. I know this because of. I've already placed a large wager on the Colts for this weekend. <laughs> on the Colts? Yeah, just because, like, fuck it. Because fuck it. That's I have no reason why I'm doing it. It's it's a dumb play. Like, don't listen to my advice on this. I'm purely doing it just because it's going to be a hilarious turn of events to watch the Colts. Like, I'll put it this way. If Jeff Saturday can, can field a 53-man roster and get them to the game on time this Sunday... That will be an accomplishment. May as well win it at that point, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, if, if they can show up on time for the game and if they can if they can start the game with 11 players on offense, defense, and special teams, then I think that's as good as a win. You got to take your hat off and you got to say, like, <laughs> this is that is a testament to, uh, to Jeff Saturday's preparedness and commitment to excellence right. if he can get the small things done. That, I mean, it's like, it's like, 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 practice scheduling like what time are we you know what I'm saying? what time are we meeting what time is lifts what time like you have to all that shit is usually packaged done deal by the time the season starts but like you just walking in and you was just I, that's that's interesting as hell actually the, well, yeah. we're definitely watching that game this the week. uncertainty must be like if you're a young guy on that team you're probably calling your agent like get me the fuck out of here yeah i was gonna ask gary nah, and nah. what's some checks some checks come in what's your <laughs> what's your in. thought as a player in the locker room when you find out on monday morning your head coach has been fired, and we just hired a guy who's never coached. Uh, I only dealt with one firing during the season, and I was actually on IR at the, towards the end of the season. Uh, but I was still around, you know, getting treatment and shit like that. It's just like an eerie feeling. It's like you kind of feel lost. You kind of feel like, damn, okay, we're throwing the season away, right? Um, but then I don't know everything changes. You know, everything, everything's changed. The demeanor changes. The meetings are weird. Like everything's just kind of, kind of everybody walking on eggshells. Cause when they, when they start firing head coaches, I mean, shit, they can start cutting people too, getting rid of folks. And it's just, everybody kind of walks on eggshells. Yeah. It must be a weird, weird vibe going on there when Jeff Saturday's coming in. He's going to give a press conference at six o'clock tonight. And <laughs> that, that will be excellent to watch. I remember one time. I remember one time when, uh, when remember when the Colts uh, released Peyton Manning. Yep. Yeah. 
uh it was like this big like deal right but like hearing peyton talk about it was so funny because um he was like you know a lot of, a lot of guys you know they're walking around they're not sure what's going on you know guys walking on eggshells uh you know i'm not being privy to you know what's going on upstairs or yada yada and i'm like hey my digger welcome to the nfl dog that's how 99 percent of the rest of the players feel all the time yeah <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah. yeah he just never had to deal with it he was always yeah, paying. He, just, he was never on the block <laughs> now people are saying that that saturday is like one of manning's right hand men and there's been a mm. lot of speculation that peyton manning wants to get back into the NFL at some point as maybe a general manager or front office executive. So they're saying that like putting Jeff Saturday in um, could be something where Peyton Manning is starting to like, he's now he's got a voice inside the organization a little bit. Mm. So it might be like he's extending a-, a silent olive branch to Peyton. Hey, Peyton is a brilliant football mind. Dog. It's brilliant. So I I don't know how how far that extends to like talent scouting and shit like that, but like that fucker is brilliant. Yeah, I think I think as a head coach, I would hire Peyton Manning like tomorrow to be a head coach because just wa- be watching him as he watches football games on the Manning cast, like he's calling timeouts, he's he's actually like calling plays as the game goes on and like identifying weaknesses in the defense. I think he would mm-hmm. be at at the very least a great offense coordinator like tomorrow if you put him up in the booth. I agree. I agree. Do you think he did that as kind of like an audition for something like that? Because he has no reason to like he doesn't need money or anything. I think he's trying to set up a, a media empire. Yeah, I, I, yeah, so. I think that's what it. Because I don't think he needs the audition. If he wanted to coach, I think he could get a job. If he wanted to, Jim like, Mercer. I, I just would, don't. Yes, Jim Mercer would give yeah. him a job tomorrow. And I also think that if you're a Colts player and you see that like Jim Mercer just hired Jeff Saturday. You're probably like, yeah, okay, that that checks out. That doesn't really surprise you. You know who you're working with with Jim Irsay. He's just he get he's a guy that goes off vibes. So um, yeah, that'll be it'll be very fun to to follow the Colts and see what happens for the rest of the season. But I just don't see how they can keep Sam Ellinger in that situation if they have like if everything else around him is completely new. You can't have a guy that's making his third start that clearly wasn't ready to start just yet. Like you got to figure out who else. Do they have another quarterback on that roster? Nick Foles. Nick Foles. Yeah, I mean they should probably start. Probably start Nick Foles. Matt Ryan's not hurt, right? They he just had a, benched him. He had a shoulder injury, but they said they were shutting him down for the rest of the year. I think he's retiring. I think he's got. A, I think his shoulders kind of fucked up. Oh, okay. I, I can't imagine throwing him back out. I there thought right he now. just got like benched. I think it was a combination. It was like you're playing so poorly, you must be hurt. Honestly, yeah. I think Sam Ellinger is the only quarterback on that roster that can survive with that offensive line, who's okay. mobile enough to avoid the hits and sacks. Because Nick Foles is a guy who you need to protect. It's not like he can sort of dodge a couple pass rushers. Like he just ends up getting clapped. Yeah, but I Sitting mean, duck. But is Sam Ellinger going to be like a better fit for what's going on right now? I don't like, know. yeah, he can escape. He can escape problems sometimes. I mean, I think, I but think, like you have to have a person that's able to call plays that he understands, right? But judging a quarterback whose second start was against Bill Belichick, I think we gotta give him a break with a new OC, and they probably changed up so much stuff the week before. Yeah, I just want Saturday to employ the the strategy of that high school coach from Arkansas who never punts onside kicks every time. Yep, he yeah. does the downfield lateral thing. Just yep. fuck it. Go yep. go all in. Do that downfield laterals. I will I will educate you, Jeff Saturday. I'm serious, by the way. If, if a team brought in like a, a a rugby team over the course of a, a mini camp and helped them learn how to offload, change the game. It would change the game of football. But no one wants to hear what PFT has to say because I've never been an NFL head coach or never worked at professional football in any degree whatsoever. But neither is Jeff Saturday, and he's about to come in and cover six point spread on Sunday. PFT. In defense of that. We talk about... Yeah, in defense of it, you're a pussy. Tur- turnover aversion. Yeah, you're a pussy. Think about how... Pusillanimous mu- is what I'm saying. You call me a pusillanimous? Yeah. Don't you call me a pusillanimous? You're being a pussy. You're a pussy. Whatever. Okay, uh, but the... Like, th- if you look at the percentage of, of downfield laterals at work... Yeah. The turnover rate is probably so much higher than a forward pass that it's just not worth implementing into an offense. It is higher than a forward pass, but you know what else is higher on a downfield lateral? 
yards gained after the lateral. It's a risk reward thing. And Can we, we find, I would like to see some serious statistics on that because I think we're just talking out of our ass on the actual success. We but are. Also, are you saying yeah, we are? We, we, I yes. believe that that's true, but you're definitely way more. Because that might not be true. Over. No, that I I believe that that's and true. like let's say success for a touchdown. Like mm-hmm. we gotta look at like for example the the average downfield pass being quarterback to wide receiver like you know results in touchdown this many times turnover this many times uh, large gain this many times. I want to see the same statistics for downfield lateral and see if it's really worth it. Listen, they said the same thing about running the triple option. They said the same thing about running the zone read, the zone read concepts. They said it would never work in the NFL. Well, there's a reason why not too many people run the triple option anymore. Why is that? Because NFL defenses can cover it and the turnover rate was... NFL defenses can cover it right now, yeah, but for a time it, it worked. Right, and then they game planned against it and the turnover rate went up. I'm telling you, it's it's still it's a good concept if you can pull it off correctly. That's all I'm saying. It'll change the game. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. If you're fine you know, I'm just playing saying, just playing football the same old, same old way, whatever. If you don't want to, you know, listen, uh well behaved women never make history. <laughs> True. All right. I've seen that I've seen that bumper sticker on many Many hybrids. I've seen, I've seen that magnet on quite a few refrigerators. I've seen it on numerous prints that you can acquire via various shops on Etsy. But I'm go. I'm applying it to NFL football. Well, Re- well-behaved women rarely make history. Well-behaved coaches. Catherine rarely Hepburn, get fired. PFT commenter. Is that Catherine Hepburn that said that? Misbehaved coaches rarely don't get fired. Well, that's not necessarily true. Yeah, you put a lot of you put a lot of sauce on that one too. Yeah, rarely don't get fired. A lot of double negatives, and I don't even know if yeah. it amounted to what I was trying to say. I just somebody tell me who, whose quote that was. I feel like it's a Hepburn, or maybe that's one of those it's things. It's definitely that just a hilarious. suffragette. It gets misattributed. You said that like it's you put some stank on that oh, suffragette. What, suffragette? Like, like you're mad about I'm not women. Mad that, about that, don't put that on me. Yeah, well, the way that you, I think it was a suffragette. No, I'm did, trying to think did of you hear which the way one that you is. said it. You were like it was probably one of those suffragettes. But I'm trying to think of which one it was in my one head. Of these, one of these women that you know create caused what a big you know, stir. What do you, got you know her about turn, What do you got, know about turn of the century? Got her panties you know, all in a bunch because she wanted she wanted to vote or something. Flapper is yeah. What's a flapper? Of course, it was a woman in the 1920s that listened to jazz music. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, more like quail feathers out of a headband. Yeah. Yeah. Flappers. Yeah. So I know what a flapper is. Yeah, and suffragettes. Yeah, but you're like one of these. One of these. This is a. This is a push 101. One of these real do-gooder women. I'm that tra- wanted, was it a that wanted to. Do we find who? Billy, maybe, maybe she just wanted. Mad Dog, can you let Mad Dog speak? Um, there is no one person attributed to. Oh, the there point. you go. Oh, it's said to have been said by Marilyn Monroe, Eleanor Roosevelt, hmm. um, Anne Boleyn. So I, I can claim so. it. Yeah, you can claim it. Okay. No, I, oh, you're claiming yeah, I am. women's yes, quotes? Yes, I am. I you're, am. You're, well, you, no you're, one knows who said it. Really. You're taking women's quotes. I'm the first person you're to ever claim man. it. I'm yeah. the first person hmm. who's claimed it. Are you colonizing? We need that quote card. We need that quote card. Well-behaved quote women card. seldom make history. <laughs> you're just, you're just colonizing, colonizing so, that quote. It's so bad. It's so bad coming from you. I know. Yeah. I love I love bad girls. What can I say? <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's it's true. It's like you gotta it, you can't make any omelets if you don't crack any eggs. PFT commenter, <laughs> that one's also mine. Yeah, but Billy was like one of these suffragettes. I did not said. say like that. You're the one who just stole a quote from women. No, Billy was like, I can't believe these women wanted to vote. Have you asked what PFT's uh, gender identity is? Yeah, what is your gender identity? That's very funny, Big T. It's That's- very it's a very funny joke. <laughs> Well, I'm a I'm a guy. I'm a dude. No. Comedy's legal now, guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, when I was going into college, they told me to write my pronouns, and I wrote "guy bro dude," and it was a really <laughs> funny to my it was really funny to my 18 year old self. But then uh, I had to change. <laughs> no, you can be a guy bro dude. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Whatever. It's pretty funny when I was 18 in 2016. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. uh what else do we want to get into today? Big T. Oh, yeah, Big T. Tell you what, we're going to do teed off in a second here. Or we can do the Tennessee Minute. It might be the same. Um, but this is brought to you by the Barstool Store. Did someone say sweater weather? Oh. 
Oh. Only the ugliest sweaters invited. Shop our new ugly sweaters now at store.barstoolsports.com. The best time of year when ugly is finally celebrated. Break a mirror to these holiday looks. Uglier, uglier, ugliest. All the best holiday looks on our site right now. Pick out your favorite ugly sweater today at store.barstoolsports.com. I'm wearing the macro dose sweatshirt. Uh, it's ugly sweater right now. It's got aliens and mushrooms. And this cool is pretty sick. They're out today. They're out today. today. Check it out right now. 20%, 20% off if you're listening on Tuesday. 20%, 20 off. Um, just a little anecdotal evidence here. I got a DM from somebody that had purchased a 999 sweatshirt this morning. I guess he purchased it last week and it arrived to his house this morning. And I, I think we accidentally sent him like 20 shirts. And he opened up the package and there were 20 shirts that were just plastic wrapped. And he, and he was like, hey, you guys sent me nine of these 999 sweatshirts. And then you sent me 11 more of these other sweaters. Uh, I think they're meant for somebody else. So I'm just saying there's a chance that if you buy one, they might accidentally send you 19 more um, just by what accident. A, what a wholesome guy, though. Yeah, very wholesome guy. Shout out. Shout out this guy. Um, hang on. Pull up his DM right now. Uh, shout out to... Our good friend, uh, the the great Googly Moogly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shout out the great great Googly Moogly. What an honest what an honest fellow he is. Googly, that sounds problematic. What's a Googly Moogly? How is that problem? I don't know. I get so tired sometimes. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Huh. Uh, all right. It is now time for the Tennessee Minute with Big T. Mad Dog, why are you clapping your hands? Bring vibes up. All right, bring bring vibes up. But. The vibes are great. <laughs> Our playoff odds went up. Caesar was right, though. Caesar was right. Yeah, he called it. Damn. So Big T, Tennessee minute, go off. Uh, Tennessee played poorly. They lost to the best team in the country. Um, and but it's fine because they're going to be the best one loss team in the country, and they're going to go to the college football playoff. Okay, so why did their odds go up? Clemson lost, they're out. Yeah. Uh, e even at 12 and 1, ACC champ, they've beaten nobody. Lost to the one team with a pulse they've played. They're not they're not getting in. Um and as long as TCU loses, which they will do one of the next two weeks against either Texas or Baylor, um Tennessee is will have the best one loss resume by far. Okay. I mean the LSU win on the road now looks incredible. That does look better. Beat Alabama, beat Florida, beat Pitt. Counterpoint, Georgia beat the dog shit out of you. I mean, they won by 14. Yeah, uh, but... At home. It wasn't really 14. You, They beat us soundly, yeah. and it probably should have been worse than 14, but it wasn't. Yeah. So, It was 14, but I mean, it was... It did look like... I, I, I don't see Georgia ever losing to Tennessee with these players. Georgia's the best team in the country. The yeah. talent gap from them in Tennessee is very, very wide. I think that was apparent. Um, but Tennessee played horrifically. Mm -hmm. um, the zone blitzed the shit out of them all game, and it just worked. Yeah, I mean, Hendon was just on his ass the whole game. Couldn't get rid of the ball. Um, but th their crowd was a huge factor. I think we had nine pre-snap penalties. Uh, I... Georgia would certainly be favored again by 10 points if they played on a neutral field, and they should be. They're the best team in the country. But if Tennessee now with a game of film to show, like, this is what we can't do and this is how we can fix it, I don't think it's it's out of the question that they could beat Georgia on a neutral field. I think it was it was awesome that you guys were number one in the country. That was cool. There's no, You can't never take that away from you. You had the one next to your name, you had it next to your name for a reason. But I think that Georgia right now is just on such a different level. Yeah, I mean they have the best roster in the country. They should be. They're they're a great team. They're going to be number one. They're going to go thirteen and zero, and we'll we'll see if we see them again. So it's probably going to be Georgia coming out of the SEC. I would imagine that Georgia is going to whoop. It, who would they play? Like probably LSU. LSU. Yeah, Georgia. I don't, I don't think LSU can beat them. Georgia's going to whoop LSU. Um, Ohio State, Michigan is interesting. The winner of that game is going to go 13-0, and but the loser has also not beaten anybody, and I don't think gets in. With, with I watched um, – I had the – I was cooking with my kids. 
I was cooking my super secret special of breakfast sandwiches for him this weekend. And I had the Ohio State Northwestern game on in the background and I'm watching and I know it was hella windy, so it might not be a good judge of Ohio State, but I was not really impressed with them as, as a squad, man. Yeah, it was a combination. They played poorly, but also like they couldn't throw the ball for two quarters of the game. So. Yeah, the, yeah, the weather was pretty bad, so I'm going to hold off my judgment. But it just – even then, you got to have something to go to. Like, their ground game wasn't that impressive. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think uh, I think if I had to pick right now, I think they're going to beat Michigan and probably go 13-0. and But I'm not overly impressed with them. Uh, but both they and Michigan haven't really beaten anybody. Uh, Penn State, I guess, is both of their best win. Yeah. Um, so whoever loses that game is probably out of the playoff. You know what's crazy is I actually think that the weather is going to be by far the most important part of the Michigan Ohio State game because if the it's play factor for because sure. it absolutely helps Michigan if it's a shitty game day like it was up in Evanston. Yep. If the wind is blowing like forty miles an hour, that's Michigan's game. Michigan can run the ball all over. Them. Ohio State is built to like light you up. Yeah. And to just stop on your throat with like fast touchdowns and just, you know, get build up a 30 point lead against you. Uh Michigan, I feel like if it's if it's like that weather was at Northwestern, they will probably win this, win that game. If it's not, if it's decent, then I think Ohio State wins by like 15. If I had to pick right now, I think the playoffs going to be Georgia, Ohio State, the Pac-12 champ and Tennessee. Georgia, Ohio State, Pac-12 champ. So either What about TCU? I think TC, I they're going to lose one, if not their next two games. Okay. They're not going they undefeated. Uh, they play at Texas this week. They're a seven-point underdog, and the next week they play at Baylor. Um, has mm. Texas's quarterback, Quinn Ewers, gotten hurt yet? No. Because – But every, he probably will next week. He probably no will TCU's during luck. practice. Yeah, during the practice week. He'll probably yeah, TC, they're a really good team. They're not, uh, they're not a playoff team. They're not going undefeated. They, they could, though. They could. They have the opportunity. And uh, then – so the you're saying that the ACC champion? What if it's what if it's UNC? They haven't beaten anybody. Either. That'd be that'd be funny if it, if UNC managed to sneak in somehow. Uh, I think the ACC is eliminated and the Big Twelve is eliminated once TCU loses. So then we're looking at Oregon, UCLA, could be one of four teams. USC or Utah. If Utah wins it, we're in for sure because they won't make the playoff. They have two losses. Um, but if one of the other three does, I think they're, they'll be the three and we'll be four. It would be fun to see UT in, in the uh, the final four, as long as you don't play Georgia the first round. I think we will play you Georgia. You probably would, though, because he'd probably be the but, first. But like I said, we played horrifically. <laughs> they played really well. Um, they should be favored if we play again, but we'll we'll see what happens. Let's talk doomsday scenario. Mm-hmm. LSU beats Georgia. Then we're fucked. That is the one game that we need to go right, is that Georgia needs to beat them. However, if you're then looking at 11-2 and two LSU and 11-1 and one Tennessee, Tennessee beat them 40-13 to 13 in Baton Rouge, I mean, you can't really put LSU in over Tennessee at that point. But they just beat the number one team in the country. But they played each other. Yeah. And Tennessee you see where, pounded you, their eyes you, shut. You see where if I'm that going happens, if listen, LSU if, would get in. Tennessee would be on the outside looking in. I don't think so. And then that would get it would give you so much ammo though to be like, well, we played the game. What's the point of even playing the game? If a tw- if Clemson or TCU or somebody got in, like there would be rightfully be riots in the streets. Uh-huh. If LSU got in over Tennessee, who, decide, who, decide, who decides? The college football playoff committee. It's made up of uh, some athletic directors, some uh, former players, different different types of people, conference commissioners. Mm. Um, mm. Condoleezza Rice was on it for a little bit. Um, oh my god! But but yeah, I, if if they put LSU in over Tennessee, there would be bad things would happen. I think like. In phys- physically, <laughs> there would be. Is that a threat? No, no. I I'm just I know <laughs> South, Tennessee South fans, like and I know that there would be t- problems. Where would where would these bad things take place? I don't know. Where does a college football playoff committee like? Who do you fight against? That's what I'm saying. It's like uh, there's no capitalist storm. A committee. I guess well. <laughs> about to say Big T about the January sixth commission. No, I, I, I I'd be down. Actually. I back up Big T on this one. I wouldn't do that, but I know people who would. I would. Where is it? Atlanta? 
Uh, no, it's in Texas. Frisco, Texas. Frisco? Maybe. Frisco, Texas. Is that how, how close is that is to Amarillo? Uh, not close. You're thinking about eating the steak again. Right, but then we then we can storm. It would be great to go storm that <laughs> for a, place. For a post-storm meal. Yeah. <laughs> then we go to Amarillo. That's not like, going to happen, though. Come on. Let's make an event out of it. Tennessee's going happen. to the college football playoff as long as they beat these last three teams. I'm I down just, to I, storm something. Big T, I'm with you. I'm with you. So Frisco, Texas, if you're not familiar with Texas geography, I believe it's pretty close it's, to da- Dallas. It's Dallas, basically. So um, I'm looking up where it is right now. It is on the northeast excuse me, north side of Dallas. So it's near like Allen, Plano, that sort of thing. Um, what are the parameters here? If Tennessee doesn't get in and TCU... No, I could live with... If TCU goes undefeated and makes it fine. Right, but walk, walk me through the, the nightmare scenario where I'm saying that like LSU beats Georgia. Yeah, if if they put LSU in at 11-2 and two over Tennessee at 11-1 and one who beat LSU to sleep... Then we have riots on our hands. Okay, then we're gonna riot in in Frisco, Texas. Can we make it a business trip? Can we expense it? Yes. Is that what you're asking? For content? I mean, I'm not paying to go, so yeah. I, I wonder down. is it is it legal to expense felonies? Well, <laughs> would <laughs> technically be a felony. I'm gonna get on the phone with Soros. Yeah, I actually we'll just pick I, it. We won't. Pick, no, yeah, we're not I've gonna got do a, anything bad. I've got a What's Zoom the DA like. I, I got a Zoom call with Soros tomorrow morning. That's nat- not surprising. naturally on election day. Yeah. And so after we figure out this situation, I'll, I'll see if we can redirect a couple buses. Okay. To take us down to Perfect. to cool. Texas. That sounds good. Um, but no, we're getting in. We're gonna beat Mizzou, South Carolina, and Vandy soundly, and we'll be in the playoff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good luck. By the way, remember when we were talking about licking toads? Uh, sure. Nah, okay. I think no, you, you were, were talking no, no, about that. PFT, you weren't here with this. Donnie, uh, Ari, and I were talking about smoking some toad venom. Mm-hmm. Um, the New York Times just released an article saying, "Oh, the hallucinogenic toads." Yeah, they're they're saying, "Don't lick the toads." Which toads are we not supposed to lick? Sonora. Well, are you mocking? Are you mocking them, telling you not to yeah, lick toads? One, one of these suffragettes. Isn't letting Just, us what? lick toads anymore. I said suffer. I said suffragette. What do you say? Lick toes or lick toads? Lick toads. It's you, like Sonoran River Toad or Colorado River Toad. Okay. Sonor- Sonoran Desert Toad, Colorado River Toad. All right, so which, th- those are both hallucinogenic? They're basically the same type of toad. They just live in two different areas. Do they look cool? They they look decent. Pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> they, they look toads, decent. Toads are pretty. They're not as uh, colorful as frogs. They're basically same sort of brownish, oh, this, lumpy-ish. Yeah, this Colorado River toad is actually, he's very chill looking. Yeah, chillest toad ever. All right, so you get these toads and then you lick them. How, how you, often do well, you Well, you don't them? actually lick them. You extract the venom, put it into rolling papers. What kind of toad is it? it? Colorado River toad or the Sonoran Desert toad. They're two sort of synonyms for the same type of toad. Now, did Joe Rogan smoke the venom of one of these toads? Uh, Mike Tyson did. Mike Tyson, okay. I think, owns a couple. And he smokes their venom. Yeah. What does he say it does? DMT. Natural occurring DMT. Okay. Wow. I'm not a drug guy, but I feel I'm scared by DMT. DMT scares me too. I'm scared I'm, because it's the chemical that your body releases when you die. I feel like that's, a, that's an important thing that your body is storing onto. That, that was my take. You might not want to get rid of it. My take was that if you did DMT while you were alive, you wouldn't get the DMT release when you die. Like if you take steroids and do testosterone, your body shuts down its own testosterone production. Yeah. So what? But if- it's like over a lot of usage, though. Like if you just try it once or twice, your body's not going to stop producing. Yeah, but I don't, we don't know. We, we don't know. I don't know like how much DMT your body has, or how much it, it like how often it recreates all the DMT that you have. It just seems like it's something that releases when when you die I don't, what if yeah i don't know you don't have any dmt and then when you die you never actually die and that's how you become a ghost yeah you never get that <laughs> enlightening dmt dose that sends you into the heavens i look at that i mean look at it like uh the rest of the uh chemicals in the brain like serotonin or dopamine or whatever right like it takes a certain amount of outside uh in, ingestion to induce any kind of you know chemical changes internally so I, i'm pretty sure if you just try it once or twice you'll be straightened up mm. but who knows i've never died 
If you want to do DMT, Arian, I will trips at you and find you the toad. Trips it. So, I, if I do it, I'm not gonna do it with the toad. I'm gonna do it like with some something else. I, I I would rather do ayahuasca than DMT. I think DMT's in ayahuasca. But it's a longer like so ayahuasca is like uh it's like three hours or, or three to six hours or some shit like that. Where DMT that trip is like twenty minutes. But it feels like a lifetime. So yeah, so they're why are they telling you not to do it though? Because people have been going on to national parks and collecting the toads and licking them and just <laughs> pilfering the toads. That's one I mean, does. I don't get why they are taking the toads. Why don't they just get the venom from the toads, put it back, and just let the toads go on with their day? I This is giving me a great idea though, Billy. Toad farm. Look. Why don't you just breed a shitload of these toads? I'm not saying I don't know how to do it. But I have bred some frogs and amphibians before. It's probably the same thing. They, yeah, you can't they it. change their sex? Uh, Jurassic Park says. Uh, well, depends on what's in the water. I've got a good joke for that big T. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Well, I, I don't oh. know. It depends on you know how much Roundups being used. So, but the they water. can though, can't they? I I think some of them can. So yeah, why, we should do the toad farm though. Welcome to Billy's Toad Farm. It's not illegal to have toads, right? Yeah, I can breed some toads. It's not against the law. No, not at all. Like you can't, that can't be against the law to own these toads. I think we actually looked it up on the past show we were talking about. I think uh, adult Colorado River toads about a hundred bucks. Oh, are you so, kidding me? Yeah, we should. Yo, we could make that back in a weekend. Think, think Frogs think can, can change their them? sex yeah, even in pristine pollution-free settings. Past research suggests that male to female sex changes happening in frogs is in suburban ponds may be caused by increased levels of estrogen released into the water. Backwaterreptiles.com. Wait, 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 wait. Was Alex Jones right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. That's we did the science experiment. We went we went we went over that. We went over that. I don't recall this. You're turning the frogs gay. Uh no. I th we don't know about their preference, but physiologically. So, so okay, just let me understand. I'm trying to I'm trying to do the math here on this toad farm venture. Okay, I just bought one. You just bought one? Yeah. Now you got to buy a second one. I bought an adult. I think you have to have two, right? There's no way you bought a frog that quick. Yeah, I, you want to see? Yeah. Billy probably has his. They've got his credit card stored. You haven't bought it yet. <laughs> it's in my cart. Okay. It's not the same. It's now. You got, a, you got a frog in your cart? Billy's not going to buy it. <laughs> Billy, buy it. How big of a tank do they need? You're being a fraud. I'm being a fraud. You are. You I'm won't, a, you won't buy it. I'm being a toad, not you're, a frog. You're not going to buy it. Fuck, I want to buy it. Yeah, you're not going to, though. Um, but just from a a business standpoint, you pay like 500 bucks, get you on a plane out to the Sonoran Desert, put you up in a motel for a couple nights. That's another like 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. Get you a lot of khaki outdoor merchandise and and uh, you know things that you can wear out into the desert. Uh -huh. It's another like two hundred bucks worth of equipment, and then we bring you back. We're looking at less than a thousand dollars probably to start up a business of breeding hallucinogenic toads here in New York City and just charging people by the lick. Yeah, I think what twenty bucks a lick. Well, no. Re realistically, we twenty only bucks need, a lick. We only need one toad. No, because we got to breed them, or we just buy several toads. We ha harvesting the poison is how we're going to make yeah, the money. Yeah, so we got to breed them so that at scale, now we've got a whole army of toads that they're they're constantly creating this poison for us. I think we could invest three hundred dollars, three toads, start making doobies with the poison, and just sell the doobies. Doobies. I think that's what the kids call them. Start slinging doobies. No, Billy, you gotta you gotta think bigger than this. And I'm I'm saying it's probably yeah okay. So five doses for a hundred. So you're looking at uh, to recoup your investment. You just need to sell fifty doses. Right. One night. One night. Fifty so you doses. Sell. What if we enlighten the city? <laughs> We're just handing them out. And then here, no, here's what we do. Ready? Then we make a, a big trip upstate to that reservoir that you're talking about, that you know oh, about. Oh, we put it in the water. And then we just, we t put them in the back of a pickup truck and we get up to the reservoir and then we just shovel all the toads into the drinking water. And, and we then, put hallucinate with DMT in New York City's drinking water. Okay, well the thing and is- And then everybody's super happy all the time. The thing is actually in those res reservoirs upstate, they're 
patrolled by NYPD environmental police. Okay. Which is part of the anti-terrorism unit. Because, oh, so am I being a terrorist right now? Yeah, we're being terrorists. Fuck. We're, we're planning terrorism right now. But, but you know. As a joke. Yeah, parody law. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you know how the NYPD is the largest police force in the world? Sure. Uh, and have like the largest anti-terrorism uh-huh. thing. Well, a lot of that is focused on reservoirs upstate. Oh. So trust me. They've they've caught me cliff jumping once and they're He's like, looked into this. Yeah. The, like when I was cliff jumping at these reservoirs and they caught me and they're like, get that's drinking water. Get out of there. I was like, it gets filtered. And he's like, You're technically being a terrorist right now. <laughs> and I was like, I'll go home. Leave me alone. I just I just think that there's there's some money to be had with Billy's toad farm idea. Bill, I'm giving you like awesome I know. Awesome business. The thing ideas. is if I did DMT, I'd definitely do, like be on this never get high on your own supply exactly it's the ted to- the 10 toad commandments <laughs> <laughs> you lick it you bought it that's commandment number one aaron can you can you send me a beat so i can make a rap a rap song to the 10 toad commandments <laughs> just just do it over biggie's instrumental that'd be even funnier <laughs> i might do that i might do that um all right anything else you want to get into aaron how was your golf would you shoot Ed, I was uh, away while you were reading the ad. What did you ask, bro? How was your golf? What did you shoot today? Oh, today was just the lessons. So uh, I, I was learning uh, a couple things about my swing. So they, they record your swing and she, you know, coaching me up on it. Shout out to my golf instructor, Aurora. She's killing, she's killing it. I'm going to be shooting in the, in the in the 80s by the end of the year for sure. Oh, I'm playing Torrey Pines this weekend. I'm hyped. That'll be sick. Yeah, it's going to be dope. That'll be, yeah, that'll be amazing. I've heard that's a great golf course. We'll see. We'll uh, see. Also tonight, because it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, isn't it? Tuesday. 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 It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, isn't it? Uh, come on out to see the Dozen live show at Terminal 5. Tickets, I think there's some tickets still available right now. I'm going to support. Mad Dog will be there to support. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be uh, myself. Fran and Brandon competing against Big Screaming Honkers. We also have the Yak playing. Uh, Frank and the Frankettes are playing. And is who else is playing? Smockin. Smockin. So, yeah, that's right. Titus. Titus. Titus and Smockin are playing tomorrow. So or tonight. So come out, check us out at Terminal Five. Um, I'm personally guaranteeing a victory, an expert's victory. That's right. Who are you guys playing? We're playing against. Um, doesn't matter anybody. Anyone. But it, it is. Big screaming honkers, R.I.P. Coley. Mm-hmm. I I like your odds. Yeah, Coley, Coley. Coley used to be on Big Screaming Honkers BSH, and he's a great player. Uh, they miss him sorely. Not to detract at all from Ben Mentz and Robbie Fox, but um, Coley, he's he's the heartbeat of any team that he's on. So uh, yeah, come see us. And again, that's a guarantee. It's a PFT guarantee. Put it in stone. Put it in the record books. Anything else we want to get into? Billy Big T. I went hunting this weekend. Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. What kind of, would would you kill? I love pheasant hunting because basically you get as much poultry as you need for the month. Do you think you could eat forty peasants in forty days? Pheasants? Pheasants are pretty small. You could yeah. That you guy would eat peasants. Fo- <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, Soros. Did you see that does he eat people? I can't keep up with Billy's memes. Are we now saying that Soros eats people? <laughs> Ask him on your cult. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll get into that. Are you uh, jealous of the guy who ate 40 rotisserie chickens in 40 days? No, I'm not jealous. I've done not, something similar. Not Billy's not jealous, jealous at all. No. I just didn't, didn't get any attention. What'd you do it. that was similar? I ate a good, I think I checked out my order history between January 1st, 2021 and February 5th when I fought Jose Canseco. I think I ate about close to thir- like 20 to 30 rotisserie chickens. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I didn't make a scene of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Billy did it first, though, guys. I didn't eat forty. It's impressive. Billy couldn't do it though. Um. Anyway, yeah, pheasant hunting is fun. I think I'm gonna get a shotgun for Christmas. Oh, good. Just yeah. double barrel. It's good. All right, you're fucking bro, you're such a bro. What? No, it's good. I'm glad. <laughs> It's cool. The 20 gauge. Yeah. It's like the bird, especially if a good dog, the dog scares out of the bush that pops up and then just like, 
Mm -hmm. Then the feathers go everywhere. I like it. I like it, Billy. And then the dog retrieves the... It's like a, it's a good bonding experience if you have a good gun dog. I've been saying that. I've been saying I'm looking for a good gun dog. We got to go shooting. I like shooting. I, I really do. I like... Uh, have you gone pheasant hunting? I've gone... I've never gone pheasant hunting, but I've gone... Uh, I've, I've shot skeet before. Don't don't even what? reply to that. Uh, I've gone... Yeah. Skeet shooting. Clay pigeons. That sort of thing. Target practice. Actually, went, we need to make a video of this. We need to go pheasant hunting. I went to a, a shooting range one time in Bandera, Texas. And uh, my friend owned a ranch out there. And I was I was hitting things from like 300 yards away. It was sick. It's dope. He had a sick sniper rifle set up. I'm basically Chris Kyle. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, we will see you guys on Wednesday or on Thursday. And until then, love you very deeply. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. Or not vote, but, but vote. Probably vote. Love you. Goodbye.